Hi everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we are going to be talking about absorption and emission spectra. The first thing that we need to do is just to describe them. Remember, a, uh, an absorption spectrum uh, appears to be a continuous spectrum with some dark lines on it, whereas an emission spectrum are some colored lines with a dark background behind them. In order to understand how these spectra are formed, we need to remind ourselves of the fact that the electrons can only occupy specific energy levels. So that means that only certain energy transitions are allowed. For instance, if we had uh, an electron go down in energy level from minus 6.04 to minus 13.6, this would give us a, uh, a photon um, with precisely the energy of 7, 5, 6 electron volts. Now, because only this transition is allowed, we could only get a photon emerging at that precise energy. When we heat up a gas, for instance, if we were to heat up hydrogen or, or a different gas, we would therefore only get certain wavelengths being emitted because only certain transitions are allowed. For instance, in this case uh, over here, we could have this transition, like so. We can also have this transition and only those three are going to be allowed. Every gas has its signature in its uh, emission spectrum. Now, the same is absolutely true for absorption. So, for instance, if, um, if I had this gas uh, over here with uh, the uh, energy levels shown over here, exactly the same transitions would be allowed, however, in reverse. So, um, in reverse, if, um, if an electron is in the ground state, only this transition will be allowed. Then if it's over here, only this transition will be allowed. And if we give it quite a lot of energy, the transition from the ground state all the way to the third state will also be allowed. Now, how is an absorption spectrum really formed in detail? Let's have a look. So let's imagine that we have a star. Now this star is going to be emitting photons across the entire spectrum. However, as the, uh, as the photons propagate, only certain energy of photons are going to be absorbed in the surface of the star and in general of the, uh, throughout the outer layers of the star. Now, those specific energies are going to correspond to the specific energies that can be absorbed by whatever substance is on the surface of the star. For instance, if there was quite a lot of hydrogen, we're expecting to find gaps in the spectrum at about 7.5. 0.56 electron volts and uh, in general those dark lines are going to correspond to frequencies to energies of uh, photons that have been absorbed and this is the only technique that we use to determine what's what stars are made of what is on the surface of, uh, of stars Okay, folks, so hopefully that was uh, useful. If there are any questions, do let me know. This is a tricky topic, and thank you very much for watching.